Hi everyone, this is uh, Tim, your Block 3 Lecture Instructor, and this PowerPoint voiceover is on renal calculi, or also known as kidney stones. Um, so basically this slide here, um, it's describing basically where the kidney stone is. Uh, you have urolithiasis, which is the stone in the urinary tract. Uh, you have nephrolithiasis, which is stones in the kidneys, and you have ureterolithiasis, which is stones in the ureters. So based on where the actual stone has been released from the kidney um, and where it actually gets stuck is going to determine uh, the classification of where it's at. Everyone excretes crystals in their urine, but not everyone forms stones. Uh, stones form in the kidney and pass into the ureter and lodges in the ureter bends. So as I mentioned in the uh, UTI um, cystitis and pilo um, PowerPoint, um, your kidneys can produce stones, and for some people, they produce a lot, and for those people, they produce them large enough that they'll actually get stuck. And when I mentioned the ureters in the UTI uh, voiceover, um, those ureters, um, based on the bend, uh, will actually narrow, and based on that narrowing is where the stones get stuck. Uh, damage from the passing stone can cause blood in the urine. So remember when we talked about the UTI um, and getting um, some sort of urine sample. If there is actually blood in the urine, we got to find out why. Whether it's a tumor or whether it's um, a stone passing through, um, it shouldn't be there. But if it is, uh, we got to find out why. And again, the stone itself it tends to be bigger. It tends to be, um, you know, very jaggedy and, and will, like I said, literally scratch its way out. Um, damage from the passing stone can cause blood in the urine. So that's where it's coming from. So here's a picture of a stone in the ureter where it's um, either passing or it could actually get stuck. And then again, it could actually go from kidney to the bladder. Um, for some people, they actually will pass them from the kidney through the ureter, and that's where the painful part is, but they don't always get stuck. That stone might be just small enough to pass, um, scratching its way all the way down to the bladder. And once it hits the bladder, your pain really essentially goes away. It's not until the bladder starts to excrete it, and then it has to go from bladder to, you know, through the urethra, where again, it's scratching its way out. So, um, you know, I've, I've had patients where the stone has gone from kidney to ureter, that's where the pain is, and then once it hits the bladder, the pain's gone away, and then they just kind of sit there. Um, and sometimes they pass, and sometimes they don't. So passing kidney stones. Um, for you as a um, nurse, you're going to do an assessment. Um, your patient's going to have severe pain. It's primarily going to be in the flank, abdomen, scrotum, and the testes. Um, and for females, um, it's basically the flank and the abdomen, um, and it kind of you know goes around that um, um, uterine area until you actually pass it. And that essentially is where your bladder and where your urethra are. Um, so that's where the pain comes from. Um, for that, you're primarily going to give a lot of pain medication just to be able to get them um, comfortable. Um, I will tell you that Toradol probably works better than anything else just because the Toradol is an anti-inflammatory. So if you can actually have things um, around the ureter and the bladder and uh, the kidneys from being inflamed, it will allow things to actually move uh, much more freely. Your patient's also going to have nausea and vomiting, so you're definitely going to look at uh, whether it be fenugreek. Um, you can also look at Zofran um, or clonidine, something that's actually going to allow that uh, nausea uh, to go away. Your patient may have some pallor, may have some diaphoresis as a reaction from that. Uh, they'll become diaphoretic. Uh, and then your patient might actually have oliguria or anuria. Um, and that's because the actual stone itself has gotten stuck and urine cannot pass past that stone. And this is an emergency because if the urine can't pass, it's going to back up and cause kidney damage. So more about stones. Um, they're going to do some diagnostic testing. Um, they'll definitely do a UA for a blood um, to find out if there's blood in the urine, or they'll actually do a UA to find out if maybe it's not just a stone. Maybe there's some sort of um, urinary tract infection going on. So they're looking at the blood in the urine. They're also looking at WBCs. They're going to do a KUB. So again, it's an X-ray based on the kidneys, ureters, and bladders. Uh, they'll also look at the CT scan and a renal ultrasound to find out if there are actually more uh, stones that are stuck or where they're at or if they're passing. They really just want to get a, a, a look at to find out what's really going on. So managing the pain. Um, I mentioned uh, the morphine. You're going to do Quatorilac or Toradol, and you can also do Ditraben. Um, Non-drug non -drug therapy, you can do relax relaxation, repositioning, and a heating pad. Um, <laughs> I can tell you that I've actually passed a stone and the relaxation doesn't work. Um, it, it, we mentioned this because of the fact that if someone can actually relax, things 
become less constricted and things will actually pass. But when you're in that much pain, it's hard to actually relax. Um, I will tell you that repositioning does help, uh, but it takes you a while to actually get into the right position to get comfortable. And then a heating pad will actually work too. This actually allows a lot more blood flow and things to be um, more dilated so the stone may actually pass. Um, other um, interventions is hydration. Um, the I can tell you that most people who have kidney stones that are passing them, usually something else is going wrong. Um, you know, we live in Arizona where it's very hot and where we tend to be more um, dehydrated. The more dehydrated you get, the more things are constricted, um, and that's when the actual stone uh, will get stuck. So the more hydration you have, the more it will dilate, the more things will flow, the more your body can actually flush that out. So um, that's probably really the key. Other interventions, they can do lithotripsy, which is basically shock waves um, to actually break up the stones. So if it's uh, pretty big and it's been stuck, they can use these shock waves to break it so that it actually allows the, the, the patient to pass the small stones. Um, they also could do stents, which actually dilates the ureter and allows the stone to pass. Or they can do a retrograde ureteroscopy, which is basically going through the urethra into the bladder and from the bladder into the ureter and basically grabbing it and pulling it out. I can tell you, none of it feels good. Well, that was pretty simple. So um, anyway, so I wanted to keep it nice and brief and, um, and to the point. Um, bring whatever questions you have to class, and we will discuss it there.